via telephone, County Commissioner Steve Catlett. Steve, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Matt. It's good to be with you. County offices are open and on time today, Steve? They are. Uh, we have uh, interviews today with the uh, three candidates we chose uh, to uh, interview for the sheriff's position. So we start that at 930 this morning and looking forward to that. And um, we are all open for business. Uh, I understand I uh, heard on your show coming into Jefferson County had closed for the day. But, they have. You're, uh, you're a hardy bunch, nine, Steve. I, I, I drive Route 9, and uh, it was fine, but the uh, side roads are uh, in pretty bad shape, so um, uh, I can understand everyone's concern. But, uh, yeah. Tell us about the selection process to get from the eight on the list right. who signed up for sheriff down to three. Yeah, we met last week and reviewed all eight uh, applications, and then we chose the top three. And uh, I know two of the gentlemen for a long time, Rob, Rob Blair, Robert Blair, and uh, and uh, Scott Richmond. Scott uh, was has been with the county for many years, uh, worked at the Sheriff's Department, and now he's over at the Judicial Center. And uh, Rob worked as a you know the state trooper here in Berkeley County for many years before he retired from there. And uh, the other candidate is Jeremy Farner, and I've never met Jeremy, so I look forward to meeting him today. And we have a, uh, a list of questions. We're going to ask each candidate the same questions, and then uh, we're going to digest everything that we hear today uh, over the next couple of days. And then on Thursday at our regular meeting, we're going to uh, go into executive session uh, to decide uh, amongst each other who we should select and then hopefully come out of that executive session with uh, with naming someone uh, to be appointed uh the hope is then uh, we'll appoint that person on Thursday, and hopefully they'll either be sworn in on Friday or Saturday and take over as uh, sheriff. So that's the plan at this point. So, And, uh, Steve, the, uh, we talked to Ken Matson last Friday, who had been one of the eight names on the list. He said he was never contacted once he signed up to find out what his qualifications were. So what was that weaning process like where you, you shed the other five? Uh, was it just a matter of, we know these people better than the others, or here's their resumes. Let's look them over and see who we want to advance. Yeah. Well, we obviously review resumes in depth. And um, like I said, one gentleman no one has ever met, but his resume uh, stood out. And so we thought he should be uh, interviewed. Uh, the other two gentlemen that we did select, uh, we know their background very well. And uh, so I thought it was a good process. We sat discussed it for uh, an hour and a half or so before we uh, decided on the three. And um, I think we're handling the situation the way it should be. So. Is this, Steve, a procedure specifically laid out in county rules and guidelines of how you go about filling this, or, or is it even uh, state rules that kind of govern what you're doing right now? Uh, none. No, there's no <laughs> rules here at the county that, uh, that have, you know, uh, situations have occurred in the past where people have been appointed to positions uh, so we chose to handle it the way we chose that we wanted to do it. We thought it would be the most transparent, be the fairest way to do it. And uh, I think, you know, there's no state uh, code that require uh, requirements you got to follow in this situation. So uh, we just have 30 days after the resignation of the former sheriff to appoint someone. So and we're going to meet that about a week early. So uh, that's the only uh, designation we had, uh, you know, from the state. So. So I'm I'm pleased with the process, how transparent we've been. That the interviews today are open to the public to uh, watch on our uh, website and all. So um, uh, we've been very open about it, and um, I think we've handled the situation uh, as best as we could. So I'm very pleased with that. And this appointment will fill the remainder of the the term for current sheriff Nate Harmon. But then the person who is selected they will be able then to run for this office if they determine, yes, they would like to continue to do this? Yes, they they, can, they could. Uh, and they have until the 27th of this month to register to apply to run for office. Uh, and uh, I, I texted in last week when they were talking about it, wh whomever is chosen, uh, this will count as their first term in office. And as sheriff, uh, you're only allowed to run two terms back-to-back. -back. So, uh 
any other all the other positions uh, there's no, no, no restriction you know like for commission or or clerks or whatever and um but the sheriff in fact, my, my father was the first sheriff in the 70s that could run uh, for a second term, so he was the first two-term sheriff in the history of the county. Um, and, and then, um, but but that person, we, we didn't want to restrict that. Uh, if we have a good candidate, uh, I think Eddie mentioned this a week or so ago on your show, Rob. Yes. Uh, we didn't think that uh, we should uh, enforce that and say, well, you can't run for sheriff either. If it's a good person... I will be wanting for the next four years after this year. So, and and, and they'll finish the term of office till December thirty first of this year. So, Steve, uh, sh- former Sheriff Nate Harmon texted me uh, last week and said that there should have been a special election to fill this position as opposed to an appointed position. Was any thought given to a special election for this uh, sheriff no, appointment? N- no such thing in the code or anything like that. It's just. Re- it's the uh, it's 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 the responsibility of the county commission to appoint somebody within 30 days, uh, and so we followed that procedure that's in the code. So, yeah, I don't think he was but, saying code called for it. I think he just felt that that would be the better yeah. way of doing it than appointing somebody. Well, um, you know, we chose to follow the path that we did, and I think it's the right way to do it. Uh, we've been very open. We, we accepted re- applications from all over the county. And uh, we broke it down to three today, and, and hopefully by uh, the end of this week, we'll have a sheriff in place. So. When you went from eight to three uh, for the five commissioners, did it work as everybody nominate your favorite one or your top three, or how did you do that? We started, and everybody just kind of picked out who they thought was the top. And then we said, well, let's, 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 let's keep it to three. So we had this discussion back and forth, but everybody had – uh, their say, and I think at the end of the day, uh, we all kind of agreed, uh, not totally on the three, but uh, the majority, majority ruled on the three candidates to be interviewed. And the interviews today are at nine thirty. We have the first interview today with. Uh, we went in alphabetical order. R- Rob Blair will be at nine thirty, uh, and then Farner, Jeremy Farner will be at ten thirty, and then Scott Richmond will be at eleven thirty. So. We've allowed 45 minutes for the interview process, 15-minute break in between, and should be done by sometime around lunchtime today, hopefully. And uh, hopefully we'll have a a good candidate uh, to select. But like I said, we're going to process our interview thoughts today and not make that decision today. We're going to wait and delay that until Thursday. So. Just an opportunity uh, to to continue to kind of think through the things that you hear today before making that decision. Uh, absolutely, yes. Steve Catlett, our guest here on the program from the Berkeley County Commission. Go ahead, Matt. I was just going to ask, oh, obviously this is a very important matter, but uh, maybe next in line uh, to, to this matter right now, what is kind of the big thing going on in the county and, and that you're uh, concerned about, especially now that the legislative session is underway and decisions that they'll yeah. be making in Charleston? It's the busiest time of year for us, uh, Matt and Rob, uh, in January, February, March. First of all, we're in our budget process, and we're, we already have agencies that have come in to present their budget. We'll have all the department heads in the county present their budgets over the next several months. We have to have that budget into the uh, state by the end of March. Uh, of course, the legislative session has started, and that's a big deal. Uh, Gary and Eddie and I are leaving on Saturday for, to be down in Charleston through Tuesday, and then we're going back in a few weeks again. Uh, we feel it's that important to be there. And, of course, uh, Access Strategies is our lobbyist that's working daily for us down there. And we have some key uh, legislation that we like to get passed. Obviously, the 1% sales tax is the big issue. And, you know, I joined the uh, County Commission Association. We're all a member of that. Well, I've been attending their meetings. I got appointed to their board of directors, and I serve as the legislative chair for this region. And so... At our meetings up at the Cape in earlier, uh, we, we made the 1% sales tax statewide by the County Commission Association as the number one to home rule. And not just the sales tax, but some counties want to do like an amusement tax, but it, it would be a choice. But home rule, regardless of how big the counties are, how much population they have, is important to everyone. In fact, I heard on your show last week, Rob, that uh, Roger Hanshaw, the Speaker of the House, And the House is the biggest hurdle for us to get over to get this bill passed. Uh, Came out in support of Home Rule. We said that on your show last week. And Mm -hmm. I was very surprised to hear that, but very pleased to hear that. So 
that was wonderful. Uh, in, in talking with some members of the House of Delegates off the record, Steve, mm -hmm. the concern that I'm hearing from them over home rule is that if the counties get the ability to have home rule and therefore have the ability to have a 1% a, a sales tax voted in, even if it's by referendum, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately the members of the House of Delegates and the Senate will be blamed for it as a tax uh, increase and voted out of office because same guys, un, same under the theory, hold on, let me finish, under the theory right. that people forget that they voted for something, and then when the tax is higher, they're not going to blame themselves. They vote the people that allowed the tax to be enacted. And the same, most of, a lot of the same representatives uh, voted to give the cities one percent sales tax. It started out with five cities, including Martinsburg, mm -hmm. and regret and now it. Every township, every township, municipality, and city and state has the ability to to to, choose, to place the sales tax in place. It's helped a lot of municipalities and townships. And the counties need it desperately, and we should be treated equally with the municipalities. Uh, we we need it desperately. We pre we're presenting the bill as a public safety uh, employee bill, and, and we are committed to saying in that bill that every penny, if it's a sales tax or amusement tax, will be used for public safety employees, whether it's whether it's school resource officers, whether it's deputy sheriffs whether it's firefighters, EMS, whatever, uh, we're committed to that. And, um, and, and I, I, you know, I'm fine with it if it has to go on the ballot locally. At a simple majority, I think we could sell it to our community here just on the fact that we need firefighters, we need deputies, we need school resource officers. You know, one of the things when I got in office that I started right away was the, this out-of-state tag situation. And it's been going on for too many years where too many people – uh, so we set up, a, we've got a couple people working on it. We've got over 3,500 cars now that are out of state that have been living here for years, months, and never changed their tags. Starting in January of this year, you can now get, you can get credit for that personal property tax. So there's no excuse in not paying this. And the school board is going to be the biggest beneficiary of this out of state tag collection. And we have asked them to commit that money for school resource officers. We only have them in the high schools now. They want to get resource officers next to the six middle schools in the county, and this is a source of revenue. We're talking several million dollars that we're not collecting over the years. Every single year that we could be using that money for school resource officers in our schools, and then the county will get a, a small share of that money too for, for whether we use it for firefighters or whatever. Steve and we need to collect this money. So. Steve, I just wanted to go back with the home rule and the one percent sales tax. What is the estimate that that you you have that that it would bring yeah. into the county? For Berkeley County, we're projecting it, and and this won't add a penny on the, the uh, city at all. The city will still say it's seven percent. We'll be equal now to the city, and we're estimating a eight million dollars minimum probably. And the good news about this is, it is a tax that the people with the most money pay the most because they have the money to spend. People on fixed incomes spend a lot of money on groceries, but it's not taxed, so it wouldn't affect that at all. Uh, the other thing is that with 81 quarter going directly through Berkeley County with 84,000 cars a day, we would have probably 30% of that tax paid for by people that live outside the county. So instead of continuing to fee, uh, add fees to the people that live here, and the only people that pay it are the property owners in this county, you would now have a chance instead of doing that. What we've even talked about maybe eliminating the controversial storm tax if we could get this. Uh, and, and take that for instance. It's forty-two dollars a house if we eliminated that. Okay, you'd have to spend four thousand two hundred dollars in merchandise here in Berkeley County to pay that back in the one percent sales tax. And it just makes it. You know, there's counties like Tucker County that has a million visitors a year at Canaan, Blackwater Falls, and Timberline. They got 6,000 residents, but the residents are paying for all the services there, and most of the services are entertaining and being used for the million million of uh, visitors there. It doesn't seem fair to me, um, and we need this bill desperately. We should be able to be treated the same as the municipalities and townships. The people that say they regret it, Rob, but then they turn around and they've let every – Thomas, West Virginia has a couple hundred residents. Davis, West Virginia are, are, are charging the 1% sales tax. And, and, and 
we have the most responsibility of anyone, any government entity in the state of West Virginia, Berkeley County Commission, because we're trying to provide services for almost 120,000 people. We have one municipality in Martinsburg with 18,000 people that's providing services. And we need this desperately to have a chance to stay above. Steve, I, the other I, issue. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, my, my point is, I'm, I think I'm openly critical of the Republicans for not letting this decision be handled locally. Locally. Yeah. Because Absolutely. this is what Republicans we, preach, less centralization. Uh, Let's let it be handled locally. Let the people on a referendum vote whether they want a 1% sales tax or not. If they vote no, the people have spoken. If they vote yes, the people have spoken. If they determine they don't like it, they can vote all you guys out. Exactly right, Rob, and that's exactly right. And you know what? There's a lot of legislators that understand this and would support it. Now, what the Senate's doing now is they want the House to present the bill uh, if they don't, by the end of January, we're going to try to uh, influence the Senate to present it, uh, to get the ball rolling. But we've had more interest showing, and, and it's not just Berkeley County now down there fighting to get this bill passed. Mm -hmm. It's the entire county commission association across the state. We've made that the number one priority for our legislative session this year. And we're going to be down there this weekend and the first of next week with that group. And we're trying to get it passed statewide. And it, it 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 would just be a total game changer for Berkeley County. I told them, you know, they want us to continue to grow at the pace we are. We're the cash cow for the state. But we have to have the tools to be able to handle the growth. And we don't. And this is the one tool that they could give us that would resolve probably 90% of our problems in terms of staying up with the growth. The other issue of the roads, of course, that's number one. I've served on the MPO this past year. We have made Route 9 West our Tier 1 project for this whole region, and we've got some we've got some movement there, hopefully. Uh, we have another MPO meeting tomorrow, but Senator Blair is working with the West Virginia DOT. I'm hearing we may have a $100 million commitment for Berkeley County alone, and we're trying to match it with a 9-to-1 match from the federal government to put a billion dollars in road infrastructure here in Berkeley County. I met with uh, a couple of uh, representatives from Shelley Moore Capito, Chris Strobel, and uh, uh, Matt Flannery last week. He's the state uh, director for Shelley uh, uh, Senate uh, in here in West Virginia. And we talked about the roads is number one, and we need help from the federal government with highways money to match some state monies to get help here. The two big issues here, of course, in Berkeley County are Route 9 West, from Martinsburg to Hedgesville, and, of course, Exit 12. And, and there's some ideas we floated on how we can help both of those situations, and we need that help desperately. There, there's road projects going on all over across the state of West Virginia. Morgan County has a $50 million bypass going on there. We're sitting here growing over 3,000 residents a year and can't get a major road project, and that has to change. And, and we're working to try to do that desperately. So. Steve, I know you have to get going because it's time to interview sheriff's uh, candidates. I appreciate your time yes. this morning, sir. I, I appreciate you having me on. You guys have a great day. Thank you. You too. You too. County Commissioner Steve Catley. Go ahead, uh, Matt. It sounds to me like Steve needs to take you uh, along on that trip, a little Eastern Panhandle talk from the Capitol. You you know, getting on those uh, Republican guys pretty good there. Hey. Hey, you can't you, preach. You, you preach it. Local, practice it. Yeah. Right. Too much centralization. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I know Ken Matson disagrees with me. He wants the uh, legislators to decide. I don't agree with that at all. I think that goes it should go to referendum. It may even have to go to referendum. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. Hey, uh, this is Ronnie Millsap taking us to break. Born this date in uh, 1900. And where are you, Ronnie? I had you a second ago. Oh, 1943. There it is.